Are you curious about bodies, pleasure, and possibilities? And what about curious about what others are up to on the planet when it comes to pleasure, sex, and play? Have you considered what pleasure can do for your life, your body, and your bank account? Do you know something magical, delightful, and out of this world orgasmic is not only possible for you, but totally available to you? If you're ready to be the magical, sexual, sexy beast you know you can be, and you just need the tools to get there, you're in the right place. Now, here's the host of The Pleasure Zone, sensual movement artist, relationship, and sex alchemist, Milica Yelenich. Welcome, my sweet pleasure seekers. Guess what? You're on the pleasure zone, even though you're going to be hearing Ceres Rivas's voice on here too. Uh, we can go with her full name, Ceres Rivas Verdejo. I, I just like saying it. It just feels like famous. So sometimes uh, when I see your name, Ceres, on like uh, Facebook, I just say it in my head because I'm, I feel like it just rolls off like as if I, you know, and this is series being interviewed by Oprah. And then Oprah's like, hey, series, Rivas Verdejo, how is your day? And like, I'm like, this is just so funny. It feels like a name that's going to go famous. So I love that. And oh, I'm so going to say it repeatedly. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, who is this series and why is she on my show? So tonight we are having a conversation. It's all about books. Because, you know, I often refer to books on the show, but I don't always just have a full on conversation about pleasure books. So tonight we're geeking out. We're talking about pleasure and intimacy books with my guest host, Ceres Rivas Verdejo. And we're going to be looking at the different books that we've enjoyed over the ages, some of the ones that maybe both of us haven't read, but maybe one of us has read. Um, certain ones that maybe we we have read and we're like, yeah, that was okay, but it sounds like it was written by like chat GPT. So I don't know if you want to read that one. <laughs> so we're going to be looking at some like qualities. Uh, if I actually knew how to, to get one of those um, rating scales on here, I would have had like five rating scales that we could have uh, used. I don't know how to do those backgrounds. So we're not having that happen today. Maybe another day when I get super creative, I might figure that out take some of this content and then put it as some ratings going on like super sexy total turn off on the bottom so between super sexy and total turn off those will be kind of like some scales we may be working with some inventing some new scales on the way and i do feel like uh you know a lot of these things just keep in mind they are subjective to who we are and uh, it all has to do with our perspective on everything so we're not trying to knock the books necessarily. If we do, or if we do say anything like that oh, was okay, uh, we're not necessarily knocking the books. It's just not our thing. So it could be your thing. So go ahead and get it anyway and check it out for yourself. So I want to tell you a little bit about Sirius before we get into the show. Um, Sirius is a family and child coach, speech language pathologist, and therapeutic energy worker. She uses her gifts to guide the her clients to connect with their body awareness and other insightful nurturing as she nurtures uh changes in in and with them uh, and she is a nurturing change agent in the world like around the world like not just in her town right so she works with people everywhere so if you are looking for a fun and expansive space to be able to access your true self you might want to connect with series to have and gain more awareness and also to learn more things around communication, interpersonal relationships, culture, health, body awareness, and of course, choice. So there's lots of fun, great, uh, different perspectives that Sirius works with and works with her clients. And if you're looking to, if you're listening to this, to this episode and afterwards you're like, oh man, she sounds fun and you want to get a hold of her, do that. You can get a hold of Sirius through empoweringlightlanguage.com. And you can also find on uh, Inspired Choices Network, if you go over to the host page, you'll be able to find all of Sirius' information on there and different links as well to talk about, uh, so that you can talk to her and find different ways to connect with her. You can also find her on all different social medias as well. Just type in her name. She's there. She's everywhere. So, Sirius, welcome to the Wild and Wacky Pleasure Zone. And it's cool to have you on because you've been on... How long have you been on Inspired Choices Network for? Almost a year, isn't it? Almost. It's getting there. Yeah. It's been really, really That's lovely. That's pretty exciting. 
<laughs> I love it. That's cool. I think your first anniversary, it comes close to my ninth, mm. which is wild. It's yours is around June or July, right? Something like that. Correct. Yep. July. Yeah. July. So July is my anniversary too. Wild. So we're having some big anniversaries here on Inspired Choices Network this year. For those of you listening in the future, it's 2023. <laughs> so for those of you listening in the past, congratulations. Don't know how you did it, but good for you. So <laughs> all about the timey-wimey and have no idea how we can get into different uh, timelines, but we do. So we do. On tonight's conversation, we're going to be talking about all favorite books and talking about the timey wimey of things. Like, what was, do you remember the very first book you got that was like sex education book? Yes, actually. Uh, that's funny you should ask that. I hadn't thought of that. I don't remember the title of the book, but I remember how the cover looked and I remember what it was yeah. about. And it was super impactful because it still to this day has like the seeds that were planted in that book are flourishing now in my life. It was a book that I snuck to read that my dad had in his home. And I would see my dad every other weekend. And sometimes he would go out and play sports. So he's a tennis coach and volleyball and basketball coach. And so he'd go and like play some sports, go out and outing. And when he left, I would sneak and I would grab this book and it was this dark green cover with this gold like frame on the cover. And I can't remember the name of the title, like I said, but it was all about this woman traveling in Europe in one of those Euro rail trains okay. and her and her lover were traveling through it. And they had all these adventures of like exhibitionism and they wow. were doing all these different fun activities in the, the cabin of their train. And it totally planted the seeds of, I want to travel and have yummy adventurous sex for the rest of my life. Hello. And that was That's back awesome. when I was like 11 years old. <laughs> I, I love that yours is all pleasure oriented where my first memories of any sex books or sex related anything was incredibly technical and we actually come from those kinds of backgrounds and we still yes. do that today so serious like love of books is very like pleasure oriented and mine are usually like very research oriented yes. <laughs> so it's quite funny that that's actually the case each other. Although, I, it, yeah. it compliments right I yeah feel like it <laughs> yeah totally I, I think my, I actually know what my first educational one was. Um, I don't, re I don't know that I actually had a lot of exposure to uh, maybe erotica until I was actually probably until my thirties. And I have, I have some, my mom gave me some erotica that's like, I can't remember the name of it. I'll check on break. Um, but it's from, it's one of those green, big old green books with the gold writing on it. Right. It's from like back in the day. And uh, it was a banned book for a really long time. It was like, my mom said it was like a book that you'd have to, the only way you could buy it was that you'd have to put it in a paper bag. Wow. And nobody would know, nobody could know that you had it. I think it was um, something about Madame, Madame Bovary. I'm not sure. Uh, anyway, there was some characters going on in there. I have not read, that. oh, we have uh, Playboy as some people's very first book. And I think that's pretty, we'll call it a book. Sure, sure. So, <laughs> the We're going to be a very chat, inclusive sure. definition of yeah, books today. Yeah. Magazine, yeah. Book. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> So mine was technical. It was actually called The Facts of Life. And it had three pages. And it was a pop-up book and it was, my aunt was educating me on my body and she was a nurse. So everything was incredibly technical. Mm. And I snuck the peek at the third page, which was incredibly heterosexual, the merging of the female and the male genitalia in 3D. And it had oh. like, it was the 3D pop-up book. It was wild. And I remember saying to her about 15 or 20 years ago, like, do you still have that book that you, she's like you remember that she was almost mortified I'm like it was one of the best educations I ever had 3d pop-up book on the genitals it was freaking awesome and it was it was like there was so much information and she talked about like all the hormones and it was like so incredibly technical I I really geeked out in that moment hearing about all the technicalities of our bodies so it's kind and of how funny. old were you um so that conversation I was 12 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right around the same age as when I first started with my journey. On yeah. And, and experiencing all these things that I hadn't experienced yet, but that man, it was like some of it, I was like, Ooh, I'm about it. And some of it, I was like, mm, not so much. And then maybe later I was like, Oh, now I'm about it. Yeah. Yeah. When it became okay. Right. Like, you know, maybe reading about lesbian love stories across Europe would have been intimidating for me at the age of 12, because I didn't, I didn't know that I knew lesbians at the age of 12. My mom had friends who, lots of friends who were gay, lots of friends. I just knew them as they loved each other and they lived in homes together. I didn't know they were gay also because it was the eighties and, and like, it wasn't safe to be gay. Right. So people didn't talk about it. They didn't really brag about it. And when there were, uh, whenever we had anybody over who was, who happened to be a gay couple, we were just like, didn't know. We just, there was no, there was no words for it. Like nobody said words to it, to it. We just knew they were in relationship. So had I read anything about it, I wouldn't have even known. And I knew there was so much judgment around it. And people were like, yeah, you wouldn't even I remember in the eighties, people wouldn't even like touch you if you were gay. Cause you could get AIDS from like, yes. nobody knew you could get AIDS from touching and you had no idea. So it was like so shameful and it was, yeah, it was pretty crappy. So for those of everybody who was like, you know, grew up in the 90s and the 2000s, you guys got super lucky to not have all that shame just saturating you the whole time. Yeah, it's definitely there, still, still existed. Lot, but, yeah. It definitely diff- still existed then and now, but we're, there's some progress. There's some yeah. some headway that we're making, which, you know, there's I would love to see more of it. And it's interesting that you mentioned that because, you know, I consider myself pansexual and I didn't have any models at all, really. So yeah. it really was finding those models and examples in the books that was my saving grace. It was like, okay, there's something, there was these possibilities out there that I could then explore and, and ask questions myself to myself about because there were definitely a lot of, lot of gay and queer people in my family and they were all closeted and it came out over the course of my 20s and 30s after I discovered who I was then I started recognizing like that whole 10 percent no my my family was like 30 percent and yeah. and so many of them <laughs> had that shame and and played into how they died for some of them too which is really unfortunate yeah that's that's a sad part of the story so on the topic of stories we were just talking about our the the first books that we were connected to that might have like sparked some interest in learning more about human sexuality and intimacy and pleasure. What was uh, what would you say was the last book that you that you like? What's like your current read that you're doing right now? It's actually the one that you recommended because we were preparing cool. it out, and I'm like about halfway through the Curious History of Sex. Do you have your copy of it? Because I only have it on Kindles. <laughs> I have it only on audiobooks, but I will, yeah, I see if I can get a picture of that. It is such a great book for anybody who, you know what, even if you normally think you're not into history, for me, I never thought I was into history till I, till when I went to university and I took the history of sexuality. And then all of a sudden I'm into history. <laughs> and I was like, I knew I loved oh, history I'm really before into history. then, but Yes, like taking a sexual, a human sexuality class really opens your eyes to this, how our pathways as humans have evolved and changed. And yet there's so many things that have stayed quite the same. <laughs> totally. So for those of you looking for a curious history of sex, it's by Kate Lister. Um, if I touch on it, it's going to start talking. But let's see if we can get that image in there. Can we? Can we? Yes, we can. There's pink writing and it's there a go. curious history of sex. We love it. It's a great book. I think it's a, to me, it's a really great book. If also, if you are just kind of um, curious enough about sex, but you're not really sure, you're not really sure, and you kind of want to learn, I think it's a great introductory book to to the history um, and language. I think that in that one, the language was just. I think the first three chapters are so saturated in like learning about the language that we think is so foul was actually not so foul I love I love that a lot about that book what are some of um the key takeaways you've got from that so far 
Oh my gosh. So, you know, I'm, I'm a big language dork, you know, being a speech language pathologist, it was like, which one came first, my love of language or like the me being able to use it in this way. And it's just like, I think it all was connected. And I totally geeked out on that. Um, and she talks very explicitly about one of my favorite words that I probably can't say on your, on your podcast. Yeah, so I was like, as soon as she got on C-U-N-T, I was like, yeah, the big C. I love the big C. Yeah. <laughs> And and also I'm an audiophile, so everything related yeah. to sounds and how she says it, like her having an English accent when she oh, says, I know, right? <laughs> I was like, oh, just I could I could listen to her read the newspaper. It doesn't matter what she talks about. And then she just happens to talk about this really great topic that I love and geek out about all the time. And I see in the in our live audience that someone mentioned that the book Pussy a Reclamation is my last book. Great book. I love that one too. By Mama yeah, Chico. that's what that one looks like by Regina Thomas Hauer. It's mm-hmm. fabulous books. So mm-hmm. we'll talk about that one in a short minute. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. so if you haven't checked out mm-hmm. The Curious History of Sex, that is a great one. I high, highly recommend it. That one to me is, it's both educational, stimulating. It brings out the raunchy. It gets you like intrigued. And, you know, even though there's like, it's history, it got me turned on. Like there were parts where I was like, that's kind of I'm like, oh, well, those are kind of erotic. Ooh, that's kind of a deliciously erotic story. She really yeah. did an amazing amount of research. And I like, I love how thorough her research was for that. So we're going to head to our first commercial. Guys, this show's flying by. And you're listening to The Pleasure Zone here on Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back after this commercial. Are you secretly a voyeur, wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives? What if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution? Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Milica Yelenich, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. You'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly, other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Melitza Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MelitzaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Ooh, welcome back, my sweet, sweet pleasure seekers. Tonight, we are talking all about pleasure and intimacy books. We're geeking out because that's what we do. If you are just joining us, it's you're actually joining two hosts of The Pleasure Zone tonight. So if you're not seeing us and you're hearing us, you're on with Siri's uh, Rivas Verdejo. I sometimes flip those, Verdejo Rivas, but it's Rivas Verdejo. And Mila Tsiyelani, and we're talking all about our favorite sex and intimacy books, pleasure books. And just before break, we were talking about the first books that we ever kind of tapped into that got us curious. And then we found out that Sirius's current read is The Curious History of Sex, which is great. Um, some of the recommends Sirius gave me, I couldn't find on my, on. I don't have audio books. I, I don't have Audible, I have audio books and it doesn't, I couldn't get them on there. So I will have to wait till I can get a hard copy. My current uh, listen is 
uh, or a book read because I do a lot of mine on audio while I'm working or while I'm driving. I do a lot of driving, so I get to do a lot of that while I drive. And it's called Bonk, The Curious History. The Curious Coupling, and I'm just going to get the full title because I have it on my, it's actually on my. Is that uh, by Mary Roach? I believe it is by, yes, I Mary Roach. I love yes. her books. Oh my God, I love all of her books. Yes, yeah, she, she has several, right? And very, she's, so far I'm loving it. I'm about an hour into a 12 hour listen, I think it is, mm. and uh, really great content. So yeah, this one, I'm just going to find what the, so yeah, the curious coupling of science and sex. So this one has a lot of the research. Uh, she kind of goes through, she has some really great stories about, you know, going to, you know, the local library where she lives in San Francisco and like pulling out all the possible research and like, they just, they, you know, she would get looks for all the things she was looking up. She would ask for some really specific research and she spent a lot of time and a lot of hour, like a lot of hours and just like a lot of her own uh, curiosity going through, uh, going through all this information to bring it to us in this fantastic book. So I highly recommend it because she's so well researched and the book is so well put together. It's a fascinating book. So, so far an hour in, I highly recommend it even at an hour in. And I, I have, I, I think when I got that, I realized that I'd, I'd listened to a few of um, maybe one or two of the other books by Mary Roach, but I'd have to check those titles and check what they were. I love so did, did, did Yeah, Stiff, Stiff is cool. one of my favorites. And it's all about it's the curious lives of human cadavers. And oh, even though it's not my kink, she actually talks about necrophilia in there and the history of it because it's talking about cadavers and and the process of decomposition and things like that and I just love anything related to bodies and and anatomy and physiology and she goes into that quite in depth and you're definitely big more about research than I am but when I do choose a nonfiction book it has to be like somebody like Kate Lester or like Mary Roach where they're both really well researched but there's whimsy there is, there is, it's not yeah. dry. It doesn't feel like a textbook. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh no, this is like a really serious history. This really serious science. No, it's really fun. It's super fun too. Funny. Otherwise I would not read it. I don't have that kind of time. <laughs> I will choose. Yeah. To <laughs> I do sometimes do some heavy duty research and yeah, it's pretty dry. So if, but I'm sapiosexual, so anything like that gets my brain going, if they're like super intelligent, for me, it's like watching porn. So <laughs> it depends, right? Sirius is an audiophile, so you know you get turned on by sounds. I also can get turned on by sounds. I find that definitely certain voices will get me really interested, even if, uh, for example, like the voice on Curious History of Sex, I, the English woman's voice, I, I could listen to her. I don't know if that's actually Kate Lister or not. I'd never checked the, who the voice was. I think it is. Yeah. Uh, is it? Yeah. The voice so. is just phenomenal. And yeah, she could be selling you toilet paper and you'd be like, that's <laughs> hot. <laughs> that's really hot. That's what that, you do, darling. That, that's a great image. Thank you for that image. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I love it. I love it. Well, you know, the other thing is like, I, I definitely, I say all the time that I get naked for laughs and for brains. I just prefer that, that person to be in the same physical space with me. Otherwise I just yeah. get frustrated. I'm like, why aren't you here? So I can like play with you. Like that's annoying. Yeah. <laughs> that's helpful, right? <laughs> so, <I> that. <laughs> do you, do you think you've read any sex books that or intimacy books that have been where you went, wow, that was just like, I can't believe I just invested time on that. <laughs> or at some point, you just go, I'm half an hour in, this doesn't work for me, I'm not even going to continue. Not that I recall, but I, I have found that with perspectives like that, if it's like offensive or morally reprehensible or something that's completely not congruent to where I'm at, I just delete it. I'm just like, I don't use my hard drive space for it. I, it's too valuable. So I couldn't even think of one right now. I'm sure I've, I think if there's more examples of me having encountered moments like that in discussion around materials, like their interpretation of the books than the actual materials themselves. 
where the content was like, uh, no, that, that, yeah. that's not true. That's not going to work for me. Um, I, I've been, I think I've been fortunate in that respect. I've been very picky and I've had a lot of like vetted things before I'll go and like actually read it. Um, and if anything, I'll be, maybe read the first chapter and if it resonates, I'll continue. And if not, I've given myself permission now because I used to not, I used to force myself to read anything from the beginning. Oh, wow. I have to read it till the end. And now I'm like within the first couple pages, first chapter, I'm like, you know, let me honor myself and my time and my body and just not do this to myself. Is there one yeah. in particular that you're thinking of that was like a no? So there's, <laughs> there's one I'm thinking of that isn't actually an education book, but I think it got misinterpreted by some people and they used it as education. Mm -hmm. And I would go with Fifty Shades of Grey on that, where some people looked at that and they thought, this is how I should learn to play with BDSM kink, like anything in the kink universe. And it's highly not educational, although I think a lot of people mistook it for that. Even and the so author has been very upfront. Not. She says, I don't know yeah. what I'm talking about. I just made this up. She's been really clear about it. People don't mm -hmm. hear it and they still mm -hmm. you choose to use it as like a Bible mm -hmm. for kink. And it's there's a lot mm -hmm. of inaccuracies yeah. in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's there's like so much missing, right? So I think there's some there are some books that um, are, have been misinterpreted that way for sure. There are probably several writings on erotica that have been misinterpreted as something that is um, educational somehow. And there's a lot of and in those things, especially and there are some really funny ones in eroticas. Maybe we'll have a conversation about this on uh, another day, but. Um, I follow some YouTubers who are hilarious about talking about, or is maybe it's TikTokers, and they talk about the uh, the misinterpretation of of uh, bodies in in um, in different writings, where they'll say stuff like her labia were winking at me, and like weird, like stuff that makes no sense. Mm -hmm. So it's like the authors have taken the body and they've just given it characteristics that we've never heard of so there are, are some really strange things and I think when people are using books that are not meant for education in an educational manner it makes no sense it's like using porn for education porn is not for education you're not going to learn your sex skills from porn no nope. porn is there to activate your brain and get you you know assist you in getting out it's not there to teach you anything so neither is like yeah neither is erotica it's there to get your body wakened up mm -hmm. so i think mm -hmm. i think that's just one i want to mention um because i think some people will go to this and then we'll have comments like yeah my favorite one was and it's like that's actually doesn't it's not that doesn't that one is not in our category of education or intimacy or so what we're looking at are great stories even collections of books so i'd love to hear so uh, if you're on any of the platforms where you can comment below, I'd love to hear you in your comments, uh, write in the comments below. Let us know what your favorite books about intimacy and sex and pleasure are. We'd love to hear it. We'd love to hear if you have any recommends for us to listen to or read or um, or even like I'd love to hear some of your commentaries on maybe the ones that we've already talked about. And maybe you have different opinions. I'd like to hear that, too. So let us know. So I, I'm also curious about what are, what do you feel is like maybe one of the, one of the most interesting things you maybe learned from, from reading any of any of like any one of the books that we've not only talked about, but any of the ones you've read, is there something that you remember as like outstanding as like a fabulous thing that you kind of live by these days? Yeah, yeah. And, you know, in the vein of, um, in contrast to Fixed D Shades of Grey, I would recommend one of these books I brought to talk about, Playing Well with Others. It's a it's um, a great book and a resource. It's called Your Field Guide to Discovering, Exploring, and Navigating the Kink, Leather, and BDSM Communities. And this book is is one that I, I definitely share with any potential partner, I, I use it as a platform for conversations around kink and BDSM. Um, it's one of the things I love about it is it's written by two different people that have very different perspectives and different kinks. 
Um, they have different sexual orientations and their and and it's also very spacious and it talks about not only the actual kink with the terminology, which you know I love the language and being very clear on the language and communication, but also it talks about self-advocacy and like what and really exploration and play and like not feeling like what you're interested in now has to be what you're interested in forever and ever. It's just this is where you're at right now. And you can always add something else different later. And it may be that you're playing around with it because that's what's interesting, what's an overlap between you and a certain partner. But then when you meet somebody else, you may feel like there is a, a, a different kind of receiving that can happen, a different kind of whimsy that can happen, and then you can create something else. And so I revisit this and don't assume anything about other people that I'm going to maybe play with or myself at any given mm-hmm. moment. I'm like, you yeah, know, I haven't really looked at this in a while. Let me look at that. Hmm. Look at that. Oh, okay. And I'm looking through and they have these little like comic strip spotlights to anecdote, like anecdotal stories to highlight some of the things that they talk about. So it shakes things up. And again, mm-hmm. nonfiction, but not serious and really, really fun and super thorough. Mm-hmm. It's a great beginner and intermediate book around kink boop right so there. so who are the authors of that just for the listeners out there who didn't get to see the title yes uh playing well with others by lee harrington and molina williams and molina williams cool so for I those of you who chat, are too. yeah oh i can we i don't know if we can <laughs> I don't think our chat works, but that's okay. We Oh, yeah, in there, for sure. So for uh, for those of you who are listening, you know, maybe we should have fair warned you, but at this point in the game, go get some paper, start writing some of this stuff <laughs> down, but re-listen, have another listen and, and like write these titles down, you know, get yourself some credits on your, on your uh, audio books or whatever, get yourself some Kindle credit, go get some books, go get some, like, I like to touch books too, like, have some actual books on hand too would be great um when we come back i'll be talking about one of the books that i found that i thought had a very inclusive message and i and that's one of the things that i really loved about it um, and it has a really great message about to me about healing so we'll talk about that a healing for our sexuality basically like anytime there's been sexual trauma and what sexual trauma might look like i think it's a fabulous book and it might be just the way i interpreted the book too so we're listening to the pleasure zone here on inspire choices and network and we'll be right back after this commercial are you secretly a voyeur wondering what's going on in other people's sex lives what if now is the time for a totally different sexual evolution Are you interested in people who are pioneers of different sexual and pleasurable practices? Lean in now with Melitza Jelanić, where she will entice you and your body to know your own pleasure zone. On the Pleasure Zone radio show with sensual movement artist Melitza Jelanić, you'll receive tools, inspiration, and a foundation to allow yourself to receive more in your sex life, and quite possibly other areas of your life as well. Listen for The Pleasure Zone with Milica every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Central Time, 6 p.m. Mountain Time, and 5 p.m. Pacific Time on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Interested in masturbating for money, copulating for consciousness, and pleasuring on purpose? 21 Days of Sexual Magicism with sensual movement artist Milica Jelanić is an exploration of tools, processes, and actions that you can use to create more for your life, your body, your money inflows, and so much more. Graduated learning for all levels of interest. Learn at your own pace via video classes or join the yearly live class. Take a peek at www.melitzajelanić.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. 
Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is The Pleasure Zone with sensual movement artist Milica Yelenich. To participate in the program today, join our live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also make the choice to ask or comment by email. Info at MilicaYelenich.com. Now, back to the program. Welcome back, my sweet pleasure seekers. Today we are talking all about, and we're geeking out all about our favorite sex and intimacy books and pleasure books. And I have a friend and co-host here with me, Siris Rivas Verdejo, who also has a show on Inspired Choices Network. So go check out her show as well. And what time, you your shows are live on Friday, right, Siris? Yeah, Friday at 10 a.m. Eastern. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So you can come through uh, through Inspired Choices Network to listen, come in the chat room. You can um, do all kinds of things like ask questions and interact in here. And you can also get it on all the same podcast locations where you find mine as well, as well as all the TV locations. Uh, so just, is there anything you want to share with the audience today about anything that you have that's upcoming that, that, that you'd like to tell people about or if you'd like to invite them to book a call with you, is there anything you'd like to promote? Let's give you a few minutes to do that. Well, I'd love for more people to check out our, my podcast and you're going to be a guest and maybe my yes. guest first on, on my podcast in May, uh, which I'm really excited about. Uh, my podcast is called Choosing a Different Future. And it's all about different resources, tools, strategies, and having wonderful guests such as Melissa, who invite us to choose beyond what's been projected and expected of us. Uh, and uh, for a lot of us, we've had many things, be it because of our gender, our sexual orientation, um, our interests, you know, our unique gifts that maybe aren't valued in the same way as it could be. Um, and so we talk about that and more and provide different tips and tools and questions we can ask so that we can soar beyond all of that and we can actually create exuberant lives that light us up. And that's very much connected with our pleasure, right? If we are Absolutely. finding our pleasure zone, then what? how much more easier would it be to have exuberant living? Yeah. 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 We can and I use have, a little bit of that. Um, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Melissa. Yeah. And I think and a, a question to the people out there listening is like, have you ever had exuberant living? And do you even know what that feels like? Can you even fathom it? And like, if you can't, guess what? You can always get some coaching to find out how. But what, did, what else did you want to share? Well, I was just going to say that um, in connection with that, like our, I do a lot of work as a family and child coach because a lot of my families, they have a tricky time sometimes knowing how to communicate about these different topics like pleasure, like body awareness with their kids. And my specialty is working with kiddos with special needs and special abilities, my X-Men kids. But I also work with with children of all ages, you know, all the way through like 99 plus uh, that are really looking to tap into their inner child. And I, one of the things I like about a lot of these books that I found, including with the playing playing well with others that we mentioned before the last break, is it it invites us to have that childish enthusiasm for living and for our bodies again, that many of us have either shut away, put on the shelf, hidden out, buried and we can uncover that and like wipe it, wipe it down, shine it up and let it sparkle again. And I really love being able to facilitate that for people. Oh, I love that. And you know, we all have, we all have the possibility of getting to sparkle again. So then it's just a matter of choosing it. So, yeah, I, I know that for me, when I was first introduced to like the idea of my own but healing myself, I was so, hmm, it was, I had some resentment come up. I was like, well, I'm not messed up. And I was like, why would I do that? Blah, blah, blah. So, you know, if, if even talking about this is kind of like edging you into like uncomfortableness, there's usually a, that's usually kind of a sign that something is coming up to be looked at. And for me, um, 
I get really uncomfortable with writing. And so when I know that it's getting, when I'm really resisting it, I know that's what I need to go do is like even just start. And so if you're even really resisting getting yourself to back to your, to your, or getting stepping into for maybe the first time your shiny self, then if you're really avoiding it, it's probably a really good idea to, you know, take that step getting into it. So before break, I had asked Iris about uh, one of the messages that she gleaned from some of her favorite books. So we talked a little bit about that, and I wanted to share with you guys about uh, the, I think one of my more recent reads in the last year was Come As You Are by Emily Nagoski. And Emily is a <laughs> like a sex educator researcher. She's got like a TED Talks out there. Um, she's phenomenal. She's and her sister, she's like got a twin. <clears throat> and her sister, I think, also does sex education. So they're quite a like a duo. I love and it. um Emily in her in the one there, so there were some outstanding things in her book that I think I, I couldn't uh share more uh, if I tried. And one of the things she talks about a lot is that arousal does not mean desire or pleasure. And so just because your body's aroused doesn't mean you desire sex or that you're having pleasure. And so I think that was really like the way she worded it was so freaking clear that anybody could understand it, including judges who say, well, you know, that per you think you got right, but you were turned on. So you weren't really. Well, she puts it so clear that even a deaf judge could hear it. <laughs> so I think that's really great. And I love that message that she shared. And then another one that she shares is she looks at, she looked at the biology of bodies and how they develop in utero. And she, she basically says, like, no matter how you identify, or how you've been identified when you were born, whether you're AMAB or AFAB, or whether you are identified as intersex. For those of you who don't know what AMAB, AFAB are, they were assigned female at birth, assigned male at birth, and then intersex is not often identified, but it's really prevalent, but often, often overlooked. So she talks about how all of us all have the same body parts organized different. So, you know, whether it's like, you know, your ovaries have the same, you know, in development, they have the same um, tissue development and everything as testicles, right? So there are all these like connecting parts. And I think to me, this is a book that every, like when you feel comfortable enough about your, you know, having conversations about sex, this is to me like a book that like, if you're 16, I'd say probably, I don't know, maybe some people are younger and they'd feel comfortable listening to this too. But if you're like, you know, 16 to like wherever, this book is great um, with education. And, and it also, because, you know, we're in April and this is Sexual Abuse Aware Awareness Month, I just wanted to also bring up that topic because she is really, she is like truly backing people who have had any abuse and saying like, yes, you may have confusion. Like if your body responded, that doesn't mean you were saying yes. So I love that about her and I love how she delivers that message. It's really, it's a really important message and I don't think it can be shared enough. So, uh, yeah, so there's some other ones. Like, awesome. Yeah. So I like to also read books on like some other, like, you know, Another one that I've been uh, reading is like Healing Love, which is like, it's a Taoist approach to sexual energy. So Ooh. that one's kind of fun by Mantak Chia. He's been around for a while, Mantak Chia. He's got oh, yeah. some different organizations. Yeah, for those of you who have, have or have never heard of him. So yeah, Healing Love, uh, you can, you can, there's, there's several books in his like, library of things that he's written so any one of them will give you some really good tools even on the audios you can when you go to get the audio they also have a download file so then you go to a website and then you can get supplementary book like workbooks that go with it which are pretty cool so i like that when the audiobooks actually have the link to something else emily nagoski's book also has a link that goes to uh, other other worksheets and stuff that she has I love that. I think it's such a cool addition. 
I found that to be really helpful in a book I just finished recently, The Atomic Habits by James Clear. And it's all about like adding good habits and letting go of the bad ones. And it has all these links to different worksheets and handouts and, and the diagrams. If you want to get deeper, mm -hmm. they'll have these images in the audio in the in the electronic book or ebook version, but then it'll link you to all these other things that you can go deeper and explore. And I, I think that's really great because it's meeting people where they're at. But it's like if you do want to go down a rabbit hole into more of you, hey, here you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that is really cool. I love that. So I'm just kind of scrolling through my um my audiobooks right now. I have a lot, a lot of different mm -hmm. ones. Wow, that's kind of wild. Um there's one I haven't listened to yet, so I can't really talk about it yet, but it's called um, The Compass of Pleasure. So that one could be interesting. And then I have another one. Well, I've actually been listening to uh, quite a few books that have to do with healing traumas. So I've been listening to uh, Stanislav Graf. I don't know if you've ever heard of him. Christina no. Graf and Stanislav Graf. So I think they were operating a lot out of California. For, for quite a while they had some workshops there holotropic breath work so basically they took like pranayama yoga and they you know cracked it up and they they were like hey let's do some workshops with this method because they both learned how to do that and they kind of brought it to the the west yes that could be cultural appropriation um yes i acknowledge that and and okay. there is some uh, <laughs> there so if you can take that work and you can go to the originators and you can do the pranayama yoga it can be amazing for also healing trauma so yeah i found that highly to be recommend it. i've been uh i've been practicing yoga since i was 15 and it definitely was a part of my healing journey with my physical issues that i had because i was almost i almost died and then my mental emotional self with anxiety and depression and then after i was raped that was a way for me to reconnect with my body in a positive way and feel like I had control and like I could go as far as I wanted to we'd say and it was each it was just a daily practice of like where am I at today how's my breathing today you know and no and having that inform my decisions and if I was going to if it was a yes or a no for me to do something I love yeah. that I yeah, love that. you've been doing, you so you've been doing yoga one. for a long, long time. You've been doing yoga before it was cool. <laughs> I don't know about that. I think it's always been cool. It's just that more people are in the know about it. Now. <laughs> as mainstream. Like I had a few friends in the 90s who did yoga, but not a lot of people were doing yoga. And we had like one TV show in Canada and it was on it was on our public television uh, network. And this woman, it was in the 70s. And she had like this fabulous 70s workout clothes that were like the spandex that was just terrible. And there were no yoga, like there were no yoga bolsters out in the world and there were no yoga mats, right? So she just put out a towel on her living room floor and she would hold on to her like mantle for her fireplace. And like she didn't, she just used everything around the house and she was, she was entertaining character. Um, yeah, so that was, that's kind of fun. And uh, yeah, so we talked a little bit about, well, I mean, I showed the book of the Kama Sutra before we got in here. And in order to do the Kama Sutra, it's really good to actually go out and do some yoga first. And also, if you're planning on practicing Tantra, really good to go out and do some fundamentals of yoga first, and not just jump into it, um, you know, full force with no experience in either energy work or moving your body, you could actually get damaged. So it's just yeah. to be aware of that. Mm -hmm. um, one of, actually, one of the other than the book that my aunt gave me outside of university, the other book that I think I really like that I really liked, it was like my hidden secret sex book that I had in my early 20s was Margot Anand's The Art of Sexual Ecstasy. And like, she was one of the first, like, also, she kind of like brought Tantra kind of to the mainstream in a way. And she'd, she'd studied um, in India. And so she, she is, she's like, she's still alive. As far as I know, she was alive during COVID. I saw her on some calls. So right. Margo Nan, she's like probably 80. I don't even know. She's Love a little it. feisty, feisty, fiery woman. I'm about it. All right, I'm we've got, it. 
we normally would have a break, but we're not going to take it because we only have like five minutes left of the show. And if we took a break, <laughs> we would we would lose that. Um, are there any favorites of yours that we haven't mentioned yet, Sidious, that you think like, yes, you, know, so you know, everybody could just try this, even if they haven't, they're not into kink and if they're not into polyamory, but if they're curious, like, yeah. cause that's kind of your thing, right? So I is there do. something? Yeah, I do. I love it. I love it all. Um, well, you know, you were mentioning a book that you haven't quite read yet, but that you were exploring. I just was looking through my Kindle and I found that I have a sample that I've explored about the poly secure workbook and oh. it's, yeah. And it's all about working through like healing your attachment um, and creating security in loving relationships in the, with this poly possibility. And it's very much just a possibility. Like that many people that are considering and exploring poly, if they think that as soon as you open it up, as soon as you explore poly and you have multiple loves and multiple relationships, that that's it, that that has to be your dynamic moving forward. And none of it's written in stone, just like in monogamous relationships, you get to choose and evolve and shift. And it's about if you're going to grow and shift together or not. So if any of you who are listening or watching have read the PolySecure book workbook, let us know what do you think about it. But I have it queued up as one of my next books to read. So I'm looking forward to that one. Um, and then the other one I really love to talk about that is that I want to almost adapt, but it's a great starter. It's called The Hard Questions, 100 Essential Questions to Ask Before You Say I Do. There is a That's sex hard. section in this book, and a lot of people do not talk about all the things that are in the chapters. Each chapter covers a different topic from health to family to home. They don't talk about these things in depth which builds intimacy, which builds connection and like clarity before they say I do or before they say, okay, we're exclusive now. I'm going to forget about everybody else. I really don't recommend forgetting about yeah. everyone else, but that's just yeah. me. Yeah. Um, but if you do, in whatever dynamic you're choosing, these are really great questions to sit down and ask. And it is a workbook where you put mine, yours, and then what ours, what we agree upon together what you actually can create something yeah. different together mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that's fabulous that is such that sounds like every household should have that and that's like the gift you know as that you could give people when they start dating and they're I like do. I'm so in love and I'm gonna get engaged next Tuesday and you're like wow you don't even know Ed's middle name but sure you go marry Ed <laughs> so I love no, this, I'm really in love. of Ed Hi, Ed, wherever you are. Wherever you are, Ed, we have no idea what your middle name is, but congratulations, you're I marrying them out Felina. Like I don't even know who Felina is, but have fun with her. Yeah. <laughs> so Ed and Felina out there. There you go. Hi, Felina. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah, so, I hand that book out like Tic Tacs. It's one of my ones. I, I, I agree with you. Everyone should have it. And I revisit it. With each relationship, I grab a new copy and I'm like, let's go work through it. Let's see where we're at with this. And then you can revisit it even if you're in a long-term relationship too. Yeah, I think that's great. I think uh, I thought I asked some hard questions before I got married, but I bet there's ones in there that I know, that we never asked. So I'm going to get that just for reference for myself and go through it. And it'll. I'm sure my husband will be like, why are we like, what? Didn't we ask these before? But no, we're going to ask them again because that was 10 years ago and we can always ask them again. And that's the thing as, as your relationships are evolving and you're evolving, things do change. So bringing these questions up and having these conversations again, even reading these books with your lover, lovers, is a great idea, right? Then you can have conversations like, you know, if you've both read, say, you know, The Art of Sexual Ecstasy, I'm only using that one as my example because that was one that I actually did uh, read with a lover at the time. We would like get in bed, snuggle, and we'd open a chapter and we would like read. And then we'd go, wow, that's a really tricky position. Neither of us were really extensively doing yoga at the time so we couldn't pull off some of the fabulous moves they had but we could keep to the basics we were pretty all right with the basics so that um you know as you're reading these with your lover that can just be an erotic experience in itself 
we have like I think 30 seconds left Siri so I want to let you just uh, give your lap oh 15 I guess we're saying goodbye I'm <laughs> yeah very really soon going. but check us out on my show when we're going to geek out about pleasure movement. thank you for listening to the pleasure zone so with excited. sensual movement artist <laughs> Milica Yelenich. The Pleasure Zone returns next Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Mountain, and 5 p.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. We hope you'll join us. Until then, have the best week of your life by choosing to be turned on and tuned in to your body.